Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and prepare yourself for a new fix, a performance boosting mod, and more technical breakdowns of each and every step in today's video about Cyberpunk 2077. Right off the bat, I'll explain the order of today's episode. It's gonna be a big one. First, we're going to recap the performance I found from my previous benchmarks video. That'll show off what it's like out of the box with no modifications or fixes on the Steam Deck. Second, we'll be going into what the swap fix from the previous few videos does to Cyberpunk's performance. Shout out to CJ46 for asking for a test on this, and Eccentric Being for giving me a starting point on what to expect. Third, we're going to go over a new Steam Deck tweak to quadruple our video memory, explain what video memory even is, and how it can help us here. Fourth, we'll be putting the VRAM tweak to the test, and seeing how it affects performance and whether you should even bother doing it. Fifth, I'll show off the process to install a mod that will replace the DLSS with FSR 2.1, which CD Projekt has not added to Cyberpunk yet. Sixth, we'll test everything together, the swap fix, the expanded VRAM, and the mod, to see exactly how much performance we can squeeze out of Cyberpunk on the Steam Deck. One last thing before we start. Here's how I defined each preset. All non-FSR options were just using the regular preset and toggling off FSR completely. All FSR options are completely default except for Ultra, for which I selected high quality FSR since it usually has FSR disabled. With that preface done, let's get started. Here was the best we could manage out of the deck before any fixes were run. As you can see, we have some decent performance across the board but the Steam Deck FSR preset was the winner when it came to looks versus performance. There's not a ton to say here since we already went over the results in the previous video, but let's take a look at the memory usage to see if a swap fix will help all that much. Alright, so here you can see that we're using somewhere between 10 and 12.5 gigabytes of memory. That means that our bottleneck isn't really something that'll be helped by the swap file fix, but let's try it anyway, for science. Okay, so I've run my swap script on my Steam Deck and set the swap file to 16 gigabytes, since it led to the best performance and stability in both GTA 5 and Red Dead 2. If you want to know more about the fix, then please go watch my previous video. Looking at the benchmarks, we can see that despite memory not being a bottleneck, we got a decent boost in performance. Both the low and medium presets got an 11% boost. You can also see with the 97th percentile results that when there's very little on screen, we get much smoother gameplay than we were able to before. Something I found interesting is that when looking at this graph, you'd expect performance to feel a lot choppier on the swap fix settings. However, what I found was actually the opposite. Let's look at how. Despite the frames per second numbers being all over the place, the frame times tended to be lower overall, leading to a smoother experience. I looked into the spike at the end of the swap fixed results as well, and it seems to be during a major scene change. It didn't really impede gameplay, and I'd be willing to bet that there was a lot of data being swapped between the RAM and the swap file, which could account for the jitter. Last up for these lower end results, I wanted to show that both the swap fix settings ended up using less GPU than the non-fixed settings. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but I think it could be willing to cache more assets, thereby letting the GPU take a breather when fetching them. Now for something very interesting. It seems that the swap fix helps non-FSR performance by a small amount, but it actually hurts FSR performance here by about 27%. This seems very similar to the odd Red Dead FSR results, and it may just be that FSR 1.0 is very eager to utilize swap more than memory. We'll have to test this theory during later tests if FSR 2.1 has the same issue, so let's move on. Okay, so before we move on to actually doing the VRAM increase, I wanted to explain briefly what VRAM is and how it works with the APU and the Steam Deck. GPUs need their own memory on board to make sure they can store things as quickly as possible. Using regular RAM for a normal PC form factor and a graphics card is way too slow for the high performance we expect nowadays. Basically, an APU is a CPU, or processor, and a GPU, or graphics processor, built into the same chip. That's what most consoles, the Steam Deck, and most phones use. In our case, this means that because the APU has to remain small, it has to share memory between the CPU and GPU, which is bad when both the CPU and GPU 
need as much as they can get. To get around this, there's a limit to how much RAM the GPU can use. In the Steam Deck, the limit is 1GB by default, which isn't enough for larger games and can lead to stutters when swapping data back and forth. Enter our next tweak. By getting into the BIOS of the deck, we can expand it all the way up to 4GB, quadrupling the memory our GPU has to play with. So let's get started. First, we have to completely shut the deck down. That can be done through the power menu, the same way you go to desktop mode, then wait until the screen goes completely black. Next, hold both the power button and the volume up button until you hear a sound come from the deck, then let them go. Wait a few seconds and you should see a weird looking screen with large buttons on it. We need to go to the lower right button, Setup Utility. On this screen, we need to go down one entry to Advanced, then change the UMA frame buffer size from 1G to 4G. Then we can press the Steam Deck Select button and press Yes to save and exit. The Steam Deck will reboot and you should be all done. If you want to confirm, you can run the following command in console. GLX info, pipe grep, dedicated video memory and see that it's now reading as 4096 megabytes. Note that you have to include the double quotes and also it is case sensitive. Before we move on, I have some notes about changing the VRAM like we just did. First, this will work for any OS you put on the Steam Deck. Second, this should not be affected by any OS updates but could be affected by a firmware update. Third, this does technically steal memory from the CPU, meaning that the CPU will only have about 12 gigabytes to use now. Fortunately, with the swap fix from earlier, the CPU still has a total of 28 gigabytes of RAM to use, so that's not nearly as big of a deal as it sounds. With that out of the way, let's get some benchmarks with the VRAM tweak. Now here's something we can talk about. The average FPS are within margin of error across the board, but the lows are about 23% and 12% higher, with the VRAM increased to 4GB. This translated directly to much smoother feeling gameplay. In particular, scene changes felt less jarring. Before we move on to higher presets, we can see that the GPU really wants all the memory it can get. Both of the tweaked versions use about 40% less memory than the pre-tweaked versions. This doesn't really make a big performance difference, but it does mean that there's less swapping going on, which is always a good thing. So honestly, I'm just including this for the sake of completeness, but the results are pretty much even across the board. The VRAM tweak helps the Steam Deck settings slightly and loses out on the Ultra settings slightly, so it's basically a wash. Overall, I think the VRAM tweak isn't super valuable to Cyberpunk on its own, if you really care about scene transitions and travel around the world quickly, it might be worth it for the higher lows, but otherwise it was pretty underwhelming. Last up is the mod, so let's try it out. Shout out to Nicolo2524 for the recommendation. I had completely forgotten that FSR 2.1 was released and that there was a mod for Cyberpunk to implement it. Before going over performance, I'm briefly going to show how to install the mod, but if you have any questions about this part, please reach out to the mod author on Nexus Mods. I can't provide a ton of support on it, but I figured I should show you the process that got it working for me just in case. First, we need to be in desktop mode again. Go to the Nexus Mod page linked below and download the FSR 2.1 mod. I use the non-beta version. Then, open the downloaded file and open Steam. Right-click on Cyberpunk 2077 in Steam, go to Manage, and open Game File Location. Now, drag the bin folder from the archive into the Cyberpunk folder that you just opened. You shouldn't need to overwrite anything. Also, while we have the archive open, drag the Enable Signature Override.reg file into your Downloads folder, and close the archive. After that, we need to install Proton Tricks from the Discover Store and open it. Choose Cyberpunk 2077 from the list. There will be an error about the wine prefix. Press OK to ignore it since we won't be installing any new software into the prefix. Now, select Choose Default Prefix, then the RegEdit option. A window will pop up. We need to go to File and press Import Registry. Then select the Enable Signature Override.reg from Downloads. It should say that it installed successfully. Note that for some reason I had to do this step twice, but it worked fine afterwards. 
After that, close Regident at each Proton Tricks window that popped up on the way. That's it. Now we can boot back into game mode and enable it. When we're in the game, we actually need to enable the setting under DLSS instead of FSR. The mod simply overrides the DLSS options to implement FSR 2.1 instead of DLSS. I chose Balanced for every preset besides Ultra, where I used Quality. With that out of the way, let's see how it performs. Now that's what I'm talking about. Even after all the incremental improvements we had over the course of this video, we see another 12% gain on low and 10% on medium with FSR 2.1. The lows are a little higher without the mod, but I wasn't able to tell without looking at the actual graphs, so I don't think they're really harmful here. Let's see how the higher presets fare. This one is a lot closer, with both being in the margin of error. The exception here is the high preset with the mod, where I could notice some stuttering that wasn't present in any of the other three runs. I wanted to see why the performance seemed to plateau here, and it led me to the GPU core clock graph. The spike in the beginning can be safely ignored as that was the loading screen, but as for the rest, we can see that for the most part the GPU is stressed to the absolute limit, which explains why FSR 2.1 isn't really helping here. There's just not much for it to work with. So here's where the difference really shows. We can see that on the Steam Deck preset, we get an additional 34% performance and 27% higher lows. This translated to a much smoother experience overall, and it looked great. Just for fun, I also tried the mod without the VRAM increase, but we actually lost a bunch of performance. So I think one of the big changes with FSR 2 is that it caches more data in VRAM than FSR 1. Now that we've compared each intermediate set of benchmarks, let's look at the first results we got and compare them with the results we just got with all the tweaks in place and see if it was worth all the work. So, it looks like after everything we did, we only managed to get a very small 2 frame boost on the Steam Deck preset. It seems underwhelming, right? Well, the good news is that we can run on high at the same frame rate now. Other than the worst lows during scene transitions, the gameplay was just as smooth but it looked a whole lot better than the Steam Deck preset. As a disclaimer, my video capture setup is 3 chained dongles and a really old USB-C hub, so don't expect this to perfectly reflect gameplay. My capture card can't even capture 40 hertz, so I had to lock it to 30 instead for some of this capture. That said, we can see in this footage that Pacifica runs great and looks beautiful, even stretched way beyond the normal screen size. I took some stills and it looks comparable to the PS4 Pro version of the game. Definitely better than the Series S, but not as good as the PS5 or Series X. Hopping on my bike, we can see that gameplay remains smooth until we enter the center city at which point it does get a little bit choppy. Setting FSR 2.1 to auto instead of quality smooths it out a bit, but wide field of view in the city is going to cause some stutter regardless. Getting back off the bike, you can see that performance evens right back out, definitely showing that the problem is constantly loading new assets. Loading back outside the city, we can try enabling HDD mode and lower the crowd density to medium. Riding back into Center City allows us to see the frame rate is basically at a locked 30 again, so I recommend doing this as well. Okay, last thing before we wrap up. I took some of the stills of the Steam Deck preset with FSR 1 and FSR 2.1 to see how the quality differs. In this first image, I saw four different sections where FSR 2.1 looks a decent amount sharper and gives a lot more detail, especially in areas with lower contrast. FSR 1 tends to lose details when it's a little grainy or the edges are hard to make out, but FSR 2.1 does not have the same issue. Here we can see more of the same, but the effect is pronounced since the geometry in this bar is very low contrast in general. The edges of the bottles and this light fixture are especially messy in FSR 1. On screen now are a few different clips I took so you can compare the visual fidelity. All of them are in Pacifica since that's where my save was, but you should be able to get the idea as long as YouTube doesn't compress the footage too badly. Overall, I think that FSR 2.1, even in the modded form, preserves more details, especially in low contrast areas. Something else I noticed is that both perform significantly better with film grain and motion blur turned off. On that note, it has been announced that Cyberpunk will be getting official FSR 2.1 support, although we don't know when. 
I'm sure that CD Projekt will do much more thorough testing than I can, and will implement it better than the mod does, so when the update gets released, I'll likely do a follow-up to this video and see how it holds up. Okay, with all the benchmarks out of the way, let's do a quick recap and figure out what we've learned. First, the swap fix is absolutely worth it. Second, the VRAM fix isn't really worth it on its own. Third, the FSR 2.1 mod is worth it, but only if you've also done the VRAM fix and upped it to 4GB. Overall, our tweaks managed to run the high preset as well as the Steam Deck preset ran originally, and the Steam Deck preset smoothed out quite a bit. As for my recommendations, I would choose one of the following. If you want the best looking game and are a graphics snob, I would choose the high preset, use both tweaks, FSR 2.1 on quality, disable motion blur and film grain, set it to medium crowd density, disable HDD mode, and lock the FPS to 30. If you want the smoothest gameplay you can get, but also want decent quality, I would choose the Steam Deck preset using both tweaks, FSR 2.1 on quality, disable motion blur and film grain, use either medium or low crowd density depending on your preference, enable HDD mode, and lock FPS to 40. If you want the smoothest gameplay you can get and don't care about the graphics quality, use the low preset with both tweaks, FSR 2.1 on balanced, disable both motion blur and film grain, low crowd density, enable HDD mode, and do not lock the FPS. If you don't feel comfortable with modding or going into the BIOS, but still want a pretty smooth experience, I recommend using the Steam Deck preset with my swap fix, FSR1 on high quality or quality, disable motion blur and film grain, set it to medium crowd density, enable HDD mode, and lock the FPS to 30. No matter what, I think that Cyberpunk on the Steam Deck is a great experience, but after all the testing, I think I'm going to go with the smoothest gameplay and decent quality I can get, and basically lock my FPS at 40 even in busy areas. Alright guys, well that's it. Everything I've learned about Cyberpunk performance on the deck thus far. Please let me know how you liked this very focused performance review of a single game, and I might make more in the future. As always, if you like the content, please toggle that subscribe key, understand the like widget, bedazzle your local Taco Bell, and take a long walk on the beach with me by leaving a comment. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.